Hello, and welcome back to Final, uh, Final Fantasy uh, Between the Stars. <laughs> ah, anyway, after a long day, you retire to your cabin. Your body feels exhausted. After so many hours alert, you trigger the opening of the hatch with the touch of a panel and remove your uniform. You prepare your clothes for the next day. I really need to heal this guy. Anyway, uh, you wrestle your blankets until you finally fall asleep. Once your nightmares finally come... Once again, the nightmares finally come back, um, increasing the strange and discomforting. Uh, flutes to keep you playing, strange figures occupying nights. Uh -huh. You wake up vaguely remembering nightmares as you watch the tablet from the side of the table. You get up immediately and notice the general discomfort. The room's spinning, temples throbbing. Oh. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna roll a dice. Six. Okay, so like one, two, three, four, five, six, type thing. All right, cool. Back to work, I guess. I've now got eagle eye. Ooh, this tablet. It's hmm, an interesting thing. So I ended up getting a flag turret just from a battle that ended up happening. I wasn't bothering bringing you in because trade. Eh. It's not much happening, I just kind of go to a place and then it's like, AHA! Combat! And it's like, alright, cool. I don't know. It's, I don't imagine that's fun to watch. If I'm wrong, feel free to tell me. But, you know. <gasps> no, I didn't do it again. Oh, I'm such a dumb... You find the ship has suffered serious damage and the whole crew is dead. We're bored the ship to recover resources, see if there are any survivors. Board a ship can contain Into some invaluable. May prepare boarding protocol. If he ends up dying just because of neglect, I'll be so upset with myself. All right, let's get our shield back up. I don't know why I boosted. I keep forgetting about the shielding. I'm sure it's fine. The very old part of the shield, shall we? You board a ship and everyone is looking in the communication room. Suddenly, a soldier captures a uh, shadow that moves at high speed. The flashy the plasma rifle spills the air. Oh no. Okay. Cool. Whatever. All I got from that is some hurt. And me forgetting again to heal the people. Departments! Uh, scrap complete. Thank you. Uh, let's finish off by healing you first. Thank you. Complete that research. Now we have two plasma cannons. I don't know why it's doing that, though. Heh. Alright, cool. Uh, in the meantime, I actually think it might be better for me to just equip another thingy. Intercept, hopefully. Like, does it also attack fighters? Is, is there such a thing as a fighter in this? Hmm. Well, alas, I'll just put it on for now. I don't think the shield generator is really helping us that much, honestly. If it keeps falling, especially. But anyway, off to the Allied Station and then off to uh, Yaksha. Because hopefully we can find out what the hell this thing is that's killing off our crewmen. Or at least poisoning them, I should say. Or autoimmuning, neutralizing them. Basically, making them the bad. Public ship requesting docking permission, please. Welcome, Captain. Dock at the assigned bay, please. Hmm. Wait a minute, isn't it? Autoimmune... Acquired autoimmune deficiency. I, I don't want to say it, but that sounds like the disease is given on stage. Right? Because it's an acquired autoimmune deficiency? I don't know. Is there any doctors in the house, so to speak? Ah, oh, bugger. Come on. There we go. I 
it's off making a horrible noise. So quickly, commercial zone. Um, let's repair our ship. I would love to pick up some, like, specialists or something in the meantime. While we still can't figure out what the disease is that's killing our crew is. Because, let's have a look at our crew, right? Who's dying right now? You've got autoimmune crisis, and I think it was you, Bagadero? 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 So I would love to just, like, grab one. Attack past. Oh, right, okay. How good they are at the shooting. So I've got a bunch that are almost leveling up as well. Anyway, uh, let's get out of here. I would literally love though to just go and do that, but alas. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really hoping though that this is going to get solved by going to the planet here. Because if the autoimmune crisis doesn't get solved by going to the planet, I don't know what to say. It's just like, oh. My scientists are apparently really bad and can't just roll a dice properly. Ah, uh, well, off to the city of Ephesus. Oh. You enjoy the tranquility and decide to go down to the training area to practice shooting. It was a moment that you expect uh, especially joyful for you, not only to keep your head sharp, but also to release some tension. You enter the weapon training facility where you encounter Sholez, who salutes you and nods. Start shooting. You keep you answer the salute, uh, prepare for everything you need. Once ready, you approach and go with them. The first shots hit the chest of the target, which eliminates, confirming the shots and showing your terminal uh, the damage done. You keep practicing making the shots increasingly focused. Extremities, organs... Uh, shooting immobile targets was something you needed, uh, you had more than mastered. In those moments you missed the shots, uh, shooting facilities of Tylet Seta. The training cramp was much more sophisticated than the old fashioned shooting range you installed upon ships. Keep shooting. You fire another blast in full impact and listen to Sholai's complaint. You look at the target which has been completely blank without any indicator of successful shots. Ah, uh, do you need help? Thank you, Captain, but I'm afraid there's nothing much to do. I like to increase the accuracy uh, from this distance, but it's going to be harder than I imagined. You put the gun on the shelf and approach him and observe his position. Hmm. Wait a minute. His firing stance was a real disaster. You grab the gun by the barrel and position it well uh, while you start to give uh, directions. Shoulders lined up. With a firm grip. Your right foot is too far behind you. You drop the gun uh, with a couple of uh, taps on his boots. You drop the gun and with a couple of taps on his boots you position the foot in the right place. Both eyes open. There is not a movie. It doesn't It doesn't just affect your perspective. It narrows your field of vision. Try it now. Huh. Hey look, we're nurturing. I think that's a good thing, I didn't even bother to check thinking about it, but I also need to look at the sick bee! Uh, so first off, nurturing. Increase the amount of experience. Oh, cool! Uh, second off, sick bee. Oh. I'd love to be able to heal that and that, but you know. Eh. Eh. Uh, fix that up. Heal that guy even. Let's get moving, shall we? I'm surprised there's not been any awkward oh, uh, conversations involving uh, Rose. It was Rose room, right? Anyway. Off to the city of Ethos. Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, nope, that's not right. There we are. Athos was once an ancient city in the middle of uh, the largest desert 
of uh, MRS-5. Even though the conditions were harsh, it was the capital city of the planet more than 500 years ago. Along with the crew, you disembark in search of the means of transport to get the sample to the extraction zone. Uh, the hatch opens as the crew get off the ship. You immediately notice the intense heat and uh, the change in the environment. The contrast to the ships flying over the city next to the old abode of buildings draws your attention. It was the first time you'd ever stepped upon that place, and no wonder. It w and it was no wonder. The lack of resources and its insufferable climate had turned it into the most forgotten city before your eyes. You walk among the main street that serves as a market. On both sides, the locals sell all sorts of trinkets and strange fruits that never seen that you've never seen before. There, you were headed was west, uh, was several thousand kilometers from the city. The first step was to get there was to get you uh, on a land ship that would allow you to advance through the planet without raising too much suspicion. Couldn't we go on our own ship? That's not possible. We need a smaller or more manageable ship. Even if it were, uh, if we managed to advance through the dunes, uh, the destroyer of the Republic would draw too much attention. Emirates 5 may be under the control of the Republic, but it's a large part of its inhabitants call themselves independent, and they're not pose great admiration for you. Ethos remains a fairly neutral position, but scavengers settle in the desert are much more radical. Uh, we better be careful. No one uh, would dare say it aloud, but Ethos uh, and Ethos were not welcome. Scavengers? They survived in the desert thanks to the assault of the commercial shipments. Kidnappings, extortions, so on and so forth. They're desert pirates. If we found a group that identified you as a member of the Republic, I don't know what would be they'd be capable of, but you wouldn't expect a warm welcome. I thought this was the first time you ever visited these Ethos. Uh, you go out to, uh, you go out one of the main streets, uh, where the crowd is concentrated by the stalls of occupying both sides of the streets. In them, the vendors offer trinkets, strange fruits, uh, with a loud voice. You watch people closely as uh, you continue to advance until a group of children swirl around you. Captain of the Republic! Captain of the Republic! Tell me! Do you have any weapons? You don't look like you've killed anyone. Ouch. Uh, you look at the doctor who grabs uh, her... You look at the doctor who grabs her arse indignantly. Um... Yeah... That's... Hmm... 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 Could be a trap. Uh, get out of here. Uh, after your threats, the children run away while they laugh and make faces. Uh, you're... On your way, uh, while one of the crew members speaks, we're wasting their time. Many of the people here could not even afford an engine for the ship. We should go to the wealthiest neighborhoods. Luckily, I downloaded a map to my terminal before we left the ship. The doctor takes her hand uh, from one of the side bags and raises her eyes uh, completely pale. What is it? My terminal! It's gone! The young woman takes off her bag and puts her hand in it, taking out a huge tear from the bottom. Tear from the bottom. No, 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 no! My ID, my terminal, I have everything in my bag! Ah, uh, the children. You turn around while you interrogate locals, as Rose had mentioned, most of them look especially unfriendly, until one of them gives you some information. It must have been Cuff's boys. It is not the first time that they cause problems in the city, with all that uh, goes on with them. In any event, Argos is the busy person, but he would not mind receiving a captain of the Republic. Who is Argos Kiff? Kiff is one of the five Doha, representatives of the city of Eros. They are in charge of the government and manage the mint of the city. Of all, Argos is by far the most loved of his familial and close character. He has watched over us and defended the city from scavengers, even until reaching his possession. Before reaching his possession, even. You can find him in the orphanage uh, of the same name on the outskirts. With a little luck, you'll find him and he'll be giving you back what you've been robbed of. Go to the orphanage. You follow the man's direction to the outskirts of the city, where you find a building with a huge line in the common language. It reads Argus K uh, Kif Orphanage. It was right. You knock on the door, and a few minutes later, it comes out a disheveled man. Look, 
Can I help you with something? Argus Kiff? Ah, uh, Mr. Argus Kiff, if you're busy right now. Is busy right now. The man looks at your uniform and corrects himself at once. Excuse me, Captain. Ah, uh, come on, I'll notify Mr. Kiff immediately. He'll take care of you as soon as he's done with some business. Thank you. The man makes you wait in the lobby. From the stairs, several children of different ages watch you timidly. Uh, while whispering, after a few minutes, a jovial-looking man, dressed in an elegant gown, comes out uh, of one of the corridors, accompanied by two other people who leave the building without even saying hello. Captain Yoshida, it is an honour to meet you. August Kiff, it's your service. Tell me, what brought you to a humble orphanage? Apparently your boys stole from us. Mr. Kiff's smile was erased immediately. He becomes guilty. I'm really sorry, Captain. I don't know what you're going to do with these... I don't know what I'm going to do with these kids. Many of them are being forced to survive on their own in the middle of the streets of Ethos. In times of the orphanage, we will try to instill the best for their future. But many of them go a rather long adaption process. I hope you've gotten... They've not gotten a bad image of the city. I assure you, I personally take care of finding exactly what happened here. And it's like you say, it wouldn't be long to get your belongings back. You have my word. And Ethos, my word, is worth a lot, Captain. In the meantime, can I do something for you? We need a ground transport ship. Of course, of course. You can use one of mine. There are uh, no wonder. They are no wonder, but they will serve their purpose. Anything of our friends in the Stellar Republic. The man seems sincere and you decide to ask him. I understand that Ethos uh, did not have any special devotion to the uh, Republic. I cannot deny that I was very surprised at your hospitality. I do not blame you for your surprise, Captain. It is well known that Ethos was always ruled itself until the treaty we signed centuries ago. Before this, the city was nothing more than a cauldron of misery and death. Thanks to the old families that ruled this area. After the expulsion of what we now know as scavengers, the Republic has helped greatly with, to build uh, Ethos into what it is today. Many may have forgotten it, but Argos Kef doesn't forget it. If you, if I can look after the well-being of the city today, it is largely thanks to you. So, you're the director of the orphanage. That's right. As one of the five doors of the city of Ethos, I owe myself to the city. That is more important than the future of the youth of tomorrow. Many of the kids' stories would make you cry at night, Captain Yoshida. Giving them a shelter is an ex education is the least we can do for them. You nod. To tell the truth, when you heard the man talking about Argus, you imagined something different. After your meeting with him in person, you started to understand why he was so admired in the city. After obtaining a transport at Ethos, you and your crew head to the old Akinanite Mines. Kalanite Mines, abandoned for centuries ago. Recent Exobrachus studies cite the place as the origin of the bacteria. It appears to be the only place on the entire planet where they can still be obtained. You follow the directions of uh, Dr. Rowe's rooms and uh, up to the foot of the mountain in the middle of nowhere. You and the crew get off the ship and immediately notice piles of material and machinery uh, remains of what surrounds the road at the summit. Taking cover from the sun, you look towards the top and question with curiosity. So then, what's here? The samples of the latest uh, Exobaraka studies were collected from one of the old mines in the area. My calculations are correct, we should be able to access it from one of the hillside entrances. Begin the ascent. The road is not particularly remarkable, apart from some of the vans and other discarded tools along the journey. The vegetation is practically non-existent, and the reddish colour of the sand covered encompasses all you could see. Rooms. What can you find in the mine? Mutants, creatures, killer mushrooms... What is it this time? Uh, Doctor shrugs before speaking. The conditions of the expansion of the exobaracologists are incompatible with the life forms on this planet. Uh, should not... Yeah. We should not have many complaints or complications beyond the difficulty of the extraction. Uh, sounds too easy to me. 
You arrive at the entrance of the mine and prepare to enter it. The crew... Oops, sorry. The crew puts the equipment and distributes the lanterns. While they organize the groups, the, spe ah, the specialists will cover the front and rear of the group, while the engineers will be a few samples behind the first group. Steps behind the first group for uh, terrain reconnaissance. You don't want any surprises this time. You go into the dark and you quietly advance while staying aware of the toxicity readings. Yeah, it's too quiet. You press a button and listen to the small elevator engine running. Suddenly, an intermittent sound follows the big snap, which sounds the room as the elevator falls through the void for a few seconds, causing a huge noise when it crashes. I knew it. It was too simple to be true. Being the only route accessible to the lower levels, you have to descend down the elevator shaft. The team of specialists will ensure the descent. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, no, no. Ooh. Ooh. Without uh, any preparation, you adjust the ropes to hang it off of the descent. The uh, fall into the void was several meters, which uh, would be, without a doubt, a fatal blow. Due to the darkness, despite the, your lanterns, uh, and as well, as well as how slippy the wall was, it will make the task even more difficult as it fits. You descend to hear Rosie's cry as several stones fall into the void and hit some of the crew members. You immediately ask, are you alright? Rose rooms, one of the stones gave way, Captain, I'm fine. You sigh, relieved as the rest of the crew and, uh, and you touch the ground. Ooh. Uh, though the mines are old, the condition of the beams are not as bad as you expected. The atmosphere was much more charged than at the top. The foul smell covered the environment, but despite that, there seem to be no signs of uh, landslides, which is very good sign. Uh, once we reunited, uh, you follow the path and the rose continues to give directions. According to her apparatus readings, as you move on, the smell becomes more and more unbearable. The ground seems to change. Where previously you had found few forks in the path, the road seems to have become more labyrinthian. Well, apparently it's according to our apparatus, so straight. No signs, which is a good sign. Straight. Ah, uh, once again, you end up in a small circular room. With three corridors, the crew looks at you, waiting for an answer. I thought you knew the way, Rose. The readings were not entirely accurate, Captain. I detected signs in the vicinity, but it's impossible to trace any exact path. I thought a copy of the original blueprints, we could locate the accesses, but the documents seem to be pretty outdated. Okay. You finally get uh, to a long corridor where the Baraco Funk the smell is more intense than any other corridor, and the main and the crew suffer some wrenching. You decide to ask Rose, what the fuck is that smell? I'm not entirely sure, but it seems that we're close to the source of the ex-biologist. The, meteor the meters do not indicate the toxicity though, perhaps we should put on the masks. The crew obeys immediately. Let's keep going forward. You continue to give Rose, uh, Rose continues to give directions through the mass communication and communicators while you notice something small and elongated in her arm. The woman notices your hand removing a small bug and it tur and turns around scares. <gasps> Don't scare me like that, Captain. I almost before she finishes a sentence, another centipede falls from the room roof of the tunnel between the two of you. What the hell? You direct the beam with, of your flashlight to the ceiling while you stand uh, where you stand. You and Rose both at rise air, raise airbrows before the chill runs through your back. The ceiling is filled with a few meters above your head and is completely covered by millions of small centipedes that uh, run frantically from each other, forming a layer so dense that it does not allow you to see the stone. Shit. As the light illuminates them, you increase the pace and run away to get away from the screams in unison. They scream in unison. Immediately, the tunnel begins to tremble, causing many of them to fall upon you. Without waiting, you re re yell to the rest of the crew, RUN! Without looking, uh, you run away, trying to evade the anthrop arthropodic cascade. That trem and while the tremors increase in the strength, before you you see how uh, the wall emerges several heads of what appears to be adult centipedes. Their antennae are at least five foot tall, moving away as their jaws 
moving move quickly as their jaws which could easily swallow uh half a human in a single bite open and close again and again heading towards you to arms oh no oh a scientist and engineer okay cool oh do i have anything good uh, random enemies It costs three, however. Oh. Oh, that's tempting. Oh, sure. I'll do that for now, see what happens. Okay, so you got armor, you're about to attack though, so uh, armor you up, please. Oh! Oh no! I get the. Ah! Uh. Okay, come on! Oh, it's fine! Oh, this is lovely! Mmm! Go! Dice! Oh, my. Why do you hate me, Dice? Okay, go. Roll. <gasps> um. Okay, well, I got rid of some. Give me an attack, please. Thank you. Okay, cool. Oh, right. So they're much weaker now. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Heal you up. Do I have anything else? That would be nice. I could literally kill one of them, which would reduce the damage to one. So if I get rid of that one. Okay, cool. Eh. Okay, that's perfectly fine with for me. Goodbye. I mean, I could have like healed some of these guys up using the points, but eh. Those size of creatures far exceeded that of an average human. Your uh, weapons were more than effective against them. You keep moving forward without stopping for a moment as you open fire on every bug that looms in your way. After a few turns of the labyrinthine corridors, you finally leave them behind and end up in a circular room completely different from the rest of the mine. Regardless, the crew tries to remove their cent remove the centipede remains uh, from their suits as quickly as they can, while some uh, curse. The expansion of the Xenobrachus is complete incompatible with life, Captain. There should be no danger in the lower levels, Captain. Uh, Rose would blush if she were not too busy removing centipede remains from her boots. Uh, what were those creatures supposed to be? I do not have a, a read on anything in my reports like this. I can only assume that there was some adaptation between the exobiologist and the uh, Xenobrachus and these creatures. My mother wouldn't believe it if, when I tell her. Won't believe it when I tell her. Without further explanation, a couple of bugs uh, are kept in small bottles and stored in her bag. Where are we? You observe carefully in the walls of a stone, which contrast greatly with the colour of the land in the uh, corridors. The room was surrounded by large carved uh, stones with strange shapes. While its centre is a circular pond, divides the room in two uh, co-centric areas. Connected by four bridges in the middle. 
A large circular table rises, giving you the impression that it was an, once an altar. You sit by the pond and watch carefully while the fluid that seems uh, to you to be water at first sight. Uh, now that you're closer, you can feel it is a lot denser. On the surface, some bubbles of the from the bottom explode, releasing a fine mist that covers the room. What is this, Doctor? Uh, that, Captain, is what I believe we're looking for. Without delay, the scientific team prepares the devices and prepares for extraction. In the meantime, you take the opportunity to continue to review the room. For some reason, that place had an attracted your attention. Wherever it seems ancient and very ancient, the condition of the stones was quite deplorable, but still, the integrity of the hall was quite well preserved. Rose, what is this place? The doctor responds whilst manipulating the fluid with small bottles. Uh, into small bottles. They're, we're not sure. When the main uh, excavations arrived at this place, the researchers began to speculate. But no specific theory was reached. One of the researchers at the time, Dr. Henley O'Donnell, seemed to have discovered something about an ancient civilization that had once populated Ethos a millennia ago. But it did not take very long to discover that it was nothing more than an old madman with a desire for fame. The scientific community withdrew to his post and nothing else was ever heard of him. You mean the study on the dismorphs? Rose is surprised of your familiarity with Dr. O'Donnell's work. Wow, Captain, I didn't think you'd be interested in that kind of thing. You answer without uh, giving much detail, and it's a long story. A chill runs through your back as you connect uh, to... Yeah, I, when you connect the piece of... T into the <laughs> Down your back, when you connect that piece uh, to the tablet, you take advantage of it as the scientific team continues the extraction of the samples and further checking the strange gravel from the stone tablet. Uh, tails. Captain, we've done collecting the samples. Dr. Room says that you can... Uh, they can stay in good shape for a few hours, but we need to get back to the ship's lab as soon as possible. <laughs> Leave the area. Okay. Having obtained the sample, you return to the orphanage, basically. <laughs> I'm now just kind of paraphrasing because we're actually over time. You arrive at port on the Ethos, exhausted from the journey. Before taking off, you had... A talk with uh, Argus Kiff, one of the Dohra in the city, before you, but before you return to your ship, you secure the samples. After all you had gone through to obtain them, you were not planning on letting them go to waste while you walked the city. As soon as you arrive, Rose leads the scientific team firmly. Uh, it was clear that the lab was her domain, even if she had done badly there. Hadn't done... Even if she hadn't done badly out there, the cat... Wait, what? Even if she hadn't, all oh right. Okay, even if she hadn't done badly out there, the doctor wasn't doing much between test uh, devices and tubes. Was doing much between test devices and tubes, and then in the open field. In a few hours, the preparations were ready, and you're on your way to the orphanage that Kiff was running. Uh, do you think he's recovered, Rose? Uh, Rosie's belongings. I hope so. Though the most important documents are encrypted, we don't know uh, who could end up with them. Surely the kids hope to sell it. If they had done, if they had not done so already, Kef has been the most uh, pleasant. Has been the most pleasant man we've encountered upon this city. Even if it is just to win the Republic's trust, we can't complain. I just hope the kids are in a good reprimand, or get a good reprimand. I remember when my mother found out that I was stealing samples from her lab uh, for personal experiments when I was just a kid. She was so angry that she used me as a test subject for months to check human adaptability in the family cluster of Arans. Arans. Arans? Like Samus Aran? <laughs> I still have dinner with them on a Foundation Day. On Foundation Day. You grimace. The truth is, you weren't sure how much it was a joke. From what little you knew of Margaret Rooms, it seemed completely plausible. You reach the huge open gate and in a few moments uh, open. One of the Argos's men gives you the access to the lobby of the building while you, uh, where you await him. Like the first time you've been there, several kids watched over the stairs until Kiff appears. Captain, I was expecting you. I was afraid you would have been victims of the scavenger drives that inhabited the desert. You could see you're safe and sound. Luckily, we haven't had any troubles. Hmm. Splendid. 
We've been much calmer lately. It seems that the, our new defense policies have been enough to keep them away from the city. You respond quickly. We have only come to thank you personally for allowing us to use one of your ships. We would not have been able to fulfill our goal if it had not been for you. The man nods again. You were also wondering if you were able to recover the stolen items. Of course, of course. I promised I would get them back, and I did. They are locked up in one of the rooms and they can be retrieved after dinner. The ma man seems eager to catch your surprise. The man seems to catch your surprise and explains, "I was hoping you would be able to spend the night with us, Captain." And Ethos, we don't see many foreigners in the city, let alone a captain of the Interstellar Republic. I have hundreds of things to discuss with you. Uh, if possible, I would love to discuss it over dinner. Uh, thank you, but we must leave. Argos seems a little disappointed. I understand, Captain, but let me insist. You can make use of the top floor rooms. They're not the most glamorous, but you can rest easily until dinner time. I'd be honored if you join us. You look over your shoulder, the crew seems eager to accept their offer. These days at Ethos um, had been exhausting, and uh, what was waiting for you once you took off would be not much better. Uh, sorry, we have unfinished business. Ugh. 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 Alright, let me at least give you some provisions for the trip. Tom, prepare the couple of boxes of kitchen supplies uh, from the kitchen for our friends. Follow me, I'll return your belongings. You follow the man upstairs, we found your belongings inside of the old mattress, one of the boys. It wasn't enough to threaten them with expulsion for him to tell us who what, uh, his accomplices were. None of them would ever taste the candy again until the day that they walk out this door. Thanks, Kip. We deeply appreciate it. Uh, after a handshake, you say goodbye and you are prepared to leave the room when Rose speaks suddenly. Excuse me, Kiff. Uh, do you think we could talk about other boys? I'd like them to apologize to us personally. Kiff's mood seems to change. The boys are about to go to bed, Doctor. They wouldn't have any qualms about them talking to you in the morning. It was the last desperate attempt to keep you here. It showed uh, he... That he showed much interest made it clear that he wanted to establish a relationship with the Interstellar Republic. Even though you had a rejected this offer, you think about it again. Oh. Mm. Oh, I don't. I kind of don't want to stay, honestly. I think it's a trap. Uh. Yeah, too. Cool. Ah, uh, you go downstairs and the Argos accompanies you to the exit. Do not hesitate to visit again, Captain. If you return to Ethos, Captain, we will always be welcome in this place. Thank you, Kiv. Ah. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have been suspicious of him? Hmm. Oh well. What can you do? First off, let's have a quick look and see if we have any... Oh, we do have some people have leveled. Cool, you take that. You take that. Uh, scientists! Um, yeah, continue with the one to the right trend that we've got going on. There we go. And... You've not got any disease or anything. Good, good. Don't have a level up in my cell, unfortunately. And as far as I can tell, that's pretty much it. Quickly not forget to heal our people up though. Would be good. Um ionic reactor, don't need that. Mm. So yeah. With that, I will leave it there. So until next time, all the best, and I hope you enjoyed!